This is our history. This needs to be known. A few years ago, Gina McVeigh of Elk Grove discovered a piece of world history in her family's past. She says it started with a chance encounter at a car dealership. And it was a gentleman in military uniform. So as we're sitting there, I told him, thank you for your service. And I said, my grandfather fought in World War I. He goes, he did? I said, yeah, he won a medal. And he goes, what kind of medal? I said, a French medal? He said, the Croix de Guerre? I said, yeah, I think that's it. He goes, do you know what you have? I'm like, a medal? He goes, no, you have history. The Croix de Guerre, a medal recognizing exceptional bravery, pinned on her grandfather, Lawrence Leslie McVeigh, by France. He was drafted, so he was out of Harlem, New York, and that happened to be the regiment that he was in. At the time of the First World War, black men were allowed to serve in the United States Army, but only in segregated units. Lawrence McVeigh joined Harlem's 369th Infantry, a regiment that would come to be known by many names. They called themselves the Black Rattlers. The French called them the Men of Bronze. But there was one that stuck. The Germans were the ones who called them the Harlem Hellfighters, because they were scared of them. So why were these Harlem Hellfighters serving under the French military? France had been in World War I for a while before the United States. The United States joined the war in 1917. By that point, France was devastated, and they asked U.S. General John Pershing for help. Pershing said, yeah, you know what, I'll send you the colored soldiers. In a memo titled, Secret Information Concerning Black American Troops, signed by a U.S. colonel serving under Pershing, instructions were given to the French military on how black soldiers were expected to be treated. It called black soldiers inferior to whites and said they lacked civil and professional conscience. Don't, you know, acknowledge them or, you know, pat them on the back. Don't eat with them and, you know, mingle with them. The French military was not segregated like the U.S., Despite the warnings in the secret information, African-American soldiers were trained with and fought side by side with their French counterparts. And in the case of Lawrence McVeigh and other Hellfighters, they were certainly commended. They were given one of the highest medals of honor from France. The Smithsonian says the Harlem Hellfighters fought the longest and lost the most men of any American unit. They spent 191 days on the front lines and lost 1,400 men. After the war, they were all awarded the Croix de Guerre, but McVeigh won his medal earlier in the war. My grandfather received his Croix de Guerre because he led his troops against a nest of German machine gun fighters until he was wounded. McVeigh and the Hellfighters returned home decorated in honors from France, but their own country still refused to treat them as equals. When they returned back from the war, actually getting off the ship, the white soldiers who met them were told, do not acknowledge them, don't do anything, just let them walk off the boat. Black soldiers returned to the same segregation and discrimination as before the war. But for the Harlem Hellfighters, a ray of light. A victory parade in their hometown of New York City. And you just see people dressed to the nines, celebrating them. And that was the only celebration that they received. Somewhere in this massive crowd was Lawrence McVeigh, who would hold on to his Croix de Guerre for years, eventually passing it down to his family, along with other memorabilia. So this is a picture of my grandma grandfather that my grandmother had written Hero on. And this was actually a postcard that he had sent to his sister, and they kept. When Gina realized the importance of what her grandfather left behind, she contacted the 369th Armory in Harlem, but they didn't have the capacity to take everything that the McVeighs had saved. So then I said, Smithsonian. I'm going to send it to Smithsonian. At the time, the Smithsonian was readying their National Museum of African American History and Culture. Gina happily gave them everything she had. Her grandfather's pictures, uniform, rifle, and the Croix de Guerre. They're all displayed there today, a monument to his life. What does it mean for you to see him honored in that way? I think because he received no honor or acknowledgement while he lived, this is emotional for me, this part. It's just to let everyone know, especially in the environment we're in now, that we are important. We have fought for a country that didn't fight for us. We believed in you when you didn't believe for us. So it, it's 
it to me it's my way of saying thank you. <laughs>